So the outline of my lecture is something like this. I start with classical approach to teaching spectral graph theory. I mean, basic things that you need. Uh, things like Laplacian and Chigior inequality, proof of Chigior inequality. And uh, so this is the algebraic approach, spectral graph theory. So I start with Chigior inequality. And uh, after that, uh, I will look at the spectral graph theory from a completely different perspective, which is... Uh, the probabilistic approach. I mean, things like mixing and coupling in random walks in different random walks. And of course, they are very related. So both paradigms are, are totally in parallel. So whatever, what, whatever result you get in one of them has a direct consequence on the other approach. And spectral graph theory is really beautiful and powerful in designing algorithm. So if you combine it with approximation algorithm that I just described in my previous playlist, that would be great. It means that you can create new uh, bounds, new upper bounds. You can generalize like Cheyenne, like Cheyenne Oves Karan and James uh, you can you can uh, generalize those Chigior inequalities to multi-way cut, and you will have a new sort of theorems. So so let's start by saying that what is our goal? Our goal is just to deduce the principal properties and structure of a graph from its graph spectrum. As you know. Uh, the adjacency is that if x is incident to y, then it's y, otherwise it's zero. And in Riemannian geometry, I mean, spectral graph theory can be, can be seen to be useful for Riemannian geometry, quantum mechanics, uh, I mean, predictions of uh, many things like revolutions. And um, and uh, the Laplacian. Before I I introduce the Laplacian, I just introduce this L. So if u is equal to v, so it is just a degree of vertex v. If u and v are adjacent, then it is minus one, and otherwise it is zero. So T is a diagonal, dv1, dvn, and zero otherwise. So C is just, can be seen as a, I mean, uh, philosophically, what we are doing, we are just mimicking the ideas of uh, Jordan normal forms in control theory, linear algebra, and those things in order to in order to decompose a complex uh, matrix. Not matrix here is with graph. Graph and matrix com could be seen as equivalence. So whatever to do in ma matrix theory, you are doing in graph theory. That's why, for example, your C n could be a sum of i from one to k of some components x i. For example. For example, the Jordan normal form. Nobody, nobody starts spectral graph theory with Jordan normal form. But I, what I like to start because it is re if you understand it, then you you get the whole picture. So you have some blocks. I don't, I don't call it stochastic block model. Everything is related to each other. So, so we have some eigenvalues, lambda one, it has some multiplicity. And, and then here we have lambda two, lambda two, some multiplicity. And then here lambda n. So otherwise it's zero. So it's like a graphone, stochastic block model. Of course, graphone is a continuous version, but, but each of these is just a cluster. So the idea is that you want to decompose 
into some expanders. For example, this is a click. This is another graph click. This is another graph click. And there are some weak connections between them. Sometimes something like this. And in, uh, if you work on the Laplacian, which is defined as Laplacian is equal to t to the minus one over one half l t minus one half, and this Laplacian can be viewed as an uh, of course t uh, in machine learning context we call it d that is a diagonal matrix d v one degree of vertex one degree of vertex two degree of vertex n otherwise it is zero. So with this in hand, you can say that Laplacian is just uh, Laplacian can be viewed as an as an operator. I mean, if you just multiply by by vector g u because l is a matrix, g of u is a vector. Think of g of u, g of u to be g is a vector, g of vertex u one, g of vertex u two. So it's a so g is just a function, a function from vertices into real. So for any for any vertex, you, it gives you an, a number until g of u n and n is num number of vertices. So it this maps u n to g n. So if this is a vector and this is l is a matrix, so l g is a vector. And uh, you can you can view L as an operator. So L uh, G of U could be seen that for any U, I mean each for uh, if each coordinate of that of the resulting vector could be written as one over this uh, and G of U over root d v, du minus g of v over root dv. And uh, you will see that um, for for weighted graph, you just uh, multiply by the weight x and y if it is weighted. And uh, so the so the Laplacian so the Laplacian is defined as 1 if u is equal to v, it is minus 1 over root of du, du dv. If u and v are adjacent, and otherwise it is 0. So if, uh, if, if, if g, if your graph is k regular, uh, L is simplified to I minus 1 over Ka. And for, for general graphs, you can write it as T minus T half LT is equal to I minus T minus 1 half AT minus 1 half. And from optimization, from any background that you have from physics, this is a Rayleigh quotient, Rayleigh quotient. So you see Rayleigh quotient in, in many contexts, in quantum theory, in uh, optimization, in my playlist of optimization. So it's just Rayleigh quotient is just the inner product of G and L Laplacian LG divided by, it is scaled by G. So if you just write this, it is G and, so in, instead of LG, you can write T minus one half LT minus one G over G and G. So, so everything is like you have a function F and Laplacian is acting on your function. So it's very connected to functional analysis. You can view it like this. So it depends on your background. You can, you can view it as many different equivalent things. And of course, you can, you can write this 
as f of v squared d of v. And this the denominator is called the sum, Dirichlet sum. So it's it's just the sum of squared. U as an edge with v. So this one, this one is Dirichlet. For historical purposes, it is Dirichlet sum. And the inner product and the stasis functions is just the sum of f of x, g of x, inner product in Rn, I mean. And uh, from, from this Rayleigh quotient, uh, from Rayleigh quotient, I can say that all eigenvalues are non-negative. So zero is an eigenvalue by definition. And so, so the spectrum, this is the spectrum. We start with uh, lambda, lambda zero is zero. And then the highest eigenvalue, which is lambda n minus one. And uh, so lambda zero, lambda one, lambda two, and uh, for example, this could be the distance between energy levels in quantum mechanics. It could be the distance between revolutions that we sometimes uh, it bothers us. The distance with revolutions that sometimes is reduced and reduced and reduced, and finally uh, we are free. And so it has many different meanings. And uh, so, so one is constant function. I mean, the, the vector one is a, is a constant function that assumes value one on each vertex. So t one half is an eigenfunction of your Laplacian with eigenvalue equal to zero. And uh, lambda of your graph, uh, we call it lambda one, because lambda zero def the is zero by definition. So what is left is just one lambda, van, lambda one and other uh, eigenvalues. So lambda one, because it is the least eigenvalues, we call it uh, lambda of your graph because it has very uh, uh, it has a deep meaning in graph theory, and I will uh, explain why. So it's orthogonal to t one. I mean, sigma f of x d of x is equal to to zero, and the infimum over f of u minus f of v squared over f of v squared d of v over v. So the corresponding eigenfunction is g, which is t over t one half f, and f is the harmonic, harmonic eigenfunction of L. So the eigenvalues of, in the continuous version, in the eigenvalues of Laplace Beltrami operator in Riemannian manifolds, if you love Riemannian geometry, it's just lambda m is infimum of f squared over m, your manifold, and f squared, and f ranges over functions that satisfy uh, this. But uh, we don't uh, talk about continuous version of all of our theories. So let's get back to, to the eigenvalue of your graph, which is the first eigenvalue, which is non-zero. And by definition, we can write it as infimum over f of u minus f of v squared over f of v squared d of v and u as an incident h with v and this is infimum 
supremum. Uh, you can you can view it like this, because if t goes to zero, then uh, they are equivalent. So so nominator is the is the same f of u minus f of v squared. I didn't touch this, but denominator I just add a zero f of v minus t squared dv over v and over u is uh, is incident to v and so this is equal to so so we just added uh, subtracted one t so it's, it's same as this and this is equivalent to saying that it is the infimum of f of u minus f of v squared Again, I didn't touch the denominator. And denominator, f of v minus f bar. It means the average squared d of v. In other words, f, f bar is just the f of v d of v volume of g. And you know, the volume of G in 90% of graph theory, which is important, is just the sum of uh, degrees of that set. For example, G is the whole set of vertices. And so this sum, this fraction is equal to volume of G times infimum of F of U minus F of V squared over f of u minus f of v squared du dv. So the largest eigenvalue, as I said, lambda n minus 1, is the supremum over all functions of this value f of u minus f of v squared divided by f of v squared dv so for for general k general k i can say lambda k is equal to infimum and supremum of sum of f of u minus f of v squared over f of v minus g of v squared dv. And this is equal to infimum of, of course, f should be orthogonal to t multiplied by pk minus 1. And uh, when I say p, I mean pi, think of this as the subspace generated by eigenfunctions eigenfunctions phi i corresponding to lambda i for any i less than k minus 1. So the infimum of sum of f of u minus f of v squared divided by f of v squared d of v over all vertices. Now we are ready to prove a very important uh, lemma. So the lemma, the lemma says that for any connected graph G with diameter D, your first eigenvalue is greater than equal to one over D volume of g you know it is very important that you relate your eigenvalue to diameter for example in Chigar inequality we don't see such things but we want to prove this so the proof is very simple because suppose so what we are doing is just um uh, we have a click, for example, or a very uh, connected component. Another connected component 
is like this and they are loosely connected to each other. Oh, let me give you another example. Suppose 